Now we are going to discuss the topic of dynamic compaction. Uh, if we just look at the deep compaction, under deep compaction we can cover dynamic compaction, vibro compaction, compaction grouting, prefabricated vertical drains, and the blast densification. Deep compaction techniques are required when in situ soil extending to large depth does not meet the requirements of performance criteria specified for the expected loading and environmental conditions. So this slide is portraying the dynamic compaction in fact, in dynamic compaction, a heavy weight is lifted up to a certain height and then it is dropped over the ground. So in this fashion, in this way, the soil or the ground can be compacted. So dynamic compaction is a ground improvement technique that densifies soils and fills by using a drop weight. The drop weight, typically hardened steel plates, are lifted by a crane and repeatedly dropped on the ground surface. The drop locations are typically located on a grid pattern, the spacing of which is determined by the subsurface conditions and foundation loading and geometry. Treated granular soils and fills uh, have increased density, friction angle, and stiffness by using this technique. The technique has been used to increase bearing capacity and decrease settlement and liquefaction potential for plant structures. In shallow cast geologies, it has been observed uh, it has been used to collapse voids prior to construction, thereby reducing sinkhole potential. Uh, probably this word cast uh, is a new word for you. Uh, cast means uh, the ground in which uh, we are having the sinkholes and the caves. Dynamic compaction has been used to compact landfills prior to construction of a parking lots, roadways, and to stabilize large area of embankment works. One of the most important considerations regarding the applicability of dynamic compaction is the type of soil being densified. In general, dynamic compaction is most beneficial on a category of soil known as granular materials. So the best suited material for this dynamic compaction that is the granular material. Granular materials enable excess pore water pressures that develop during the densification process to dissipate rapidly. Dynamic compaction will be effective in cells, clay cells, and sandy cells. It means dynamic compaction can also be considered in the case of cells, clay cells, and sandy cells. <coughs> so <coughs> to study the dynamic compaction, <coughs> we can consider these four headings, technique, design, evaluation and effectiveness. So first look at the technique. Technique involves repeatedly dropping a large weight from a crane. <clears throat> weight may range from 6 to 172 tons. Drop height typically varies from 10 meter to 40 meter.
degree of densification achieved is a function of the energy input weight and drop height as well as the saturation level fines content and permeability of the material 6 to 30 ton weight can densify the loose sands to a depth of 3 to 12 meters so when a weight is dropped from a height so you will be having the impact of load in this direction as well as in these directions done systematically in a rectangular or triangular pattern in phases <clears throat> each phase can have number of passes primary secondary tertiary tertiary so it means uh, you can have the primary passes first then the secondary and then the tertiary passes spacing between impact points depend upon depth of compressible layer permeability of soil location of groundwater level now this point is interesting deeper layers are compacted at wider grid spacing upper layers are compacted with closer grid spacing so basically you know when you want to compact the deeper layer then obviously heavy weights will be used but as far as the spacing or the grid spacing is uh, uh, to be con considered that is relatively large on the other hand when the top layer is to be compacted so relatively small weights will be used and in that particular case we will be having the closer grid spacing deep craters are found by damping uh, crater crater means hemi spherical uh, pit created by the impact of a heavy object so you can see in this fig in this uh, photograph a number of craters hemi spherical pit craters may be filled with sand after each pass heave around crater is generally small then comes the energy transfer mechanism energy transferred by propagation of relay or surface waves and the volumic shear and compression waves and if you consider the relay waves it is consisted of about 67 percent of total shear waves 26 percent and compression wave 7 percent densification process compressibility of saturated soil due to presence of micro bubbles gradual transition to liquefaction under repeated impact rapid dissipation of pore pressure due to high permeability after soil fissuring fissuring means internal cracking thixotropic recovery that means with passage of time the soil will gain its loss strength application <clears throat> applicable to wide variety of soils grouping of soils on the basis of grain sizes you can see that uh, this grain size distribution chart and here you can see that zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 and if you just look at zone 1 uh, pervious soils plasticity index is equal to 0 in this region this is zone 2 that is semi pervious and uh, the plasticity index is from 0 to 6 you can less than 6 plasticity index is greater than 0 but it is less than 6 and here it is the greater than 6 
So you can see here it is mentioned clearly that zone 1 the best zone, zone 3 this one, this is the worst zone and even you can consider some alternate methods if your soil is falling in this uh, zone. Zone 2 must apply multiple phases to show uh, to allow for poor pressure dissipation. So this is the best zone and then this. So mainly used to compact granular fills, particularly useful for compacting rock fills below water and for bouldery soils where other methods cannot be applied or are difficult. Waste dumps, sentry landfills and mine waste are the typical cases that you can consider for dynamic compaction. In sentry fills, settlements are caused either by compression of voids or decaying of the trash material over time. DDC, Deep Dynamic Compaction, DDC stands for Deep Dynamic Compaction, is effective in reducing the void ratio and therefore reducing the immediate and long term settlement. So Deep Dynamic Compaction is also effective in reducing the decaying problem since collapse means less available oxygen for decaying process. For recent fills where organic decomposition is still underway, deep dynamic compaction increases the unit weight of the soil mass by collapsing voids and decreasing the void ratio. For older fills where biological decomposition is complete, DDC has greatest effects by increasing unit weight and reducing long-term ground subsidence. Now the types of dynamic compaction. Simple dynamic compaction technique, dynamic consolidation, dynamic replacement, rotational dynamic compaction and rapid impact dynamic compaction. So first look at uh, the simple technique of the dynamic compaction. It is the compaction of unsaturated or highly permeable saturated granular materials by heavy tamping. The response to tamping is immediate. Dynamic consolidation. The improvement by heavy tamping of saturated cohesive materials in which the response to tamping is largely time dependent. Excess pore water pressures are generated as a result of tamping and dissipate over several hours or days after tamping. Dynamic replacement. The formation by heavy tamping of large pillars of imported granular soil within the body of soft saturated soil to be improved. The original soil is highly compressed and consolidated between the pillars and ex the excess pore water pressure generator requires several hours to dissipate. The pillars are used both for soil reinforcement and drainage. So there are two things, soil reinforcement and the drainage. So this is the schematic view a hole is being made into the ground, then the granular material is being filled and it, it, is, it is being compacted. So in this way you will be having the dynamic replacement. Then the modified version, rotational dynamic compaction. A new dynamic compaction technique which makes use of the free fall energy as well as rotational energy of the temper called rotational dynamic compaction or DC. So you can see that here we are having the free fall energy 
and additionally we are having the rotational energy of the tamper. The technique increases depth of improvement in granular soils. Comparative study showed that the cone penetration resistance was generally larger than conventional dynamic compaction and the tamper penetration in rotational dynamic compaction was twice as large as that of conventional dynamic compaction. And uh, this is the rapid impact dynamic compaction. So impact dynamic compaction can be com done rapidly by using this type of device. So here you can see that by lifting this assembly and uh, dropping it on the soil like this so we can compact that ground. Evaluation of improvement. The depth of improvement is proportional to the energy per blow. The improvement can be estimated through empirical correlation at design stage and is verified after compaction through field test such as standard penetration test, cone penetration test, etc. So two important things, the weight that is W and uh, the height through which it has been dropped. So these two things are very, very important when you are considering the dynamic compaction. So D sub max, D max, that is also denoted by DI, that is the maximum depth of improvement. So D max is equal to N multiplied by the square root of W into H. So here D max, that is DI, this one, or you can use this symbol, that is the maximum depth of improvement in meters and the coefficient that uh, caters for soil and equipment variability. W is the weight of tamper in tons and capital H in uh, some handbooks you would find small h, so both symbols can be used, small h or capital H, that is the height of fall of tamper or weight and that's again in meters. The diff effectiveness of dynamic compaction can also be assess readily by the greater depth and requirement of backfill. I have already mentioned that uh, crater is the semi hemispherical, uh, hemispherical pit created by the impact of heavy weight. So N values as per different researchers, you can get the N value from this slide. Ground vibrations. Dynamic compaction generates surface waves with the dominant frequency of 3 to 12 hertz. These vibrations generate compression, shear and relay waves. The relay waves contain about 67 percent of the total vibration energy and become predominant over other wave types at uh, comparatively small distances from the source. Relay waves have the largest practical interest for the design engineers because building foundations are placed near the ground surface. The ground vibrations are quantified in terms of peak particle velocity, PPV. And the PPV is defined as the maximum velocity recorded in any of the three coordinate axes. The measurement of vibrations is necessary to determine any risk to nearby structures. The vibrations can be estimated through empirical correlations or measured with the help of instruments such as portable seismograph, accelerometer, velocity transducers, 
linear variable displacement transducer LVDTs, etc. So effects on moments. Well, if you are having the velocity more than 0.1 millimeter per second, not noticeable, whereas it is greater than 17.8 millimeter per second, severe noticeable. And in between these two extreme cases, we are having these cases. Monitoring and control. So you can see here, this is the weight which uh, has been dropped from a certain height. So here you can see that, uh, that this temper is uh, equipped with accelerometer and frequency modulation transmitter. And then we can, we can see the total station is there, van with receiving and uh, processing unit is there. And you know, from in this van, we are having the FM receiver uh, FM discriminator and the signal conditioner and then you will be having the data acquisition system and uh, the digital oscilloscope and uh, this data acquisition system is connected to the printer and you can get the prints. Design and analysis considerations. Well, in this regard, these are the important things. Depth of improvement, that means the depth up to which you are having the effect of this uh, dynamic compaction, that is the depth of improvement, DI or Dmax. Impact energy, capital E, influence of cable drag, equipment limitations, influence of temper size, grid spacing, S, time delay, between between passes and the soil conditions. So first, look at the depth of improvement. So primary concern uh, depends on soil conditions, energy per drop, contact pressure of temper, grid spacing, number of passes, time lag between passes. Impact energy E, weight of temper times the height of drop, main parameter in determining the depth of improvement and can be calculated from the equation. D max is equal to N into square root of W into H and that is the free fall of weight. Because of the free fall of the weight, you are having this depth of improvement, that is D max. Influence of cable drag. Cable attached to the temper causes friction and reduces velocity of temper. Free fall of temper is more efficient. Equipment limitation, crane capacity, height of drop, mass of temper, temper size. So when we are using the word temper, basically we are considering the weight that is being dropped from the height. Grid spacing, significant effect on depth of improvement. First pass compacts deepest layer should be equal to the compressible layer. Subsequent passes compact shallower layers may require less energy. Ironing pass compact top layer. To compact the top layer, we use the flat plates and that is uh, that pass is considered as the ironing pass. Time delay between passes, allow pore pressures to dissipate. Piezometers can be installed to monitor dissipation of pore pressure following each pass. Now we are going to discuss uh, one particular approach for the design. 
and uh, this approach was developed by Poren and Rodriguez in 1992. They suggested an approach for the design of dynamic compaction scheme in a project based on the approximate shape of the area compacted which is assumed as follows. So look at that, if you just look at that crater, this dimension as per them that is 2a and uh, this dimension that is b. So this is the approximate shape of the crater that we are having and uh, from the top you can see that uh, you are having a circle and uh, the radius of that circle is a. So if this radius is a, so obviously this diameter that is 2a. So here look at that, if that weight has been dropped over here, so you can see you are having this crater. If the weight has dropped over here, you are having this crater. So in this way you can see the distance between, uh, well this dimension is A, this dimension is also A and uh, this dimension is B and S sub G is the distance between. Now this figure is very important this axis is meant for B over D, this axis is meant for N multiplied by W sub H into small h divided by AB and uh, this is in the units of kiloton per square meter and uh, this axis is meant for A over D. This graph is meant for A over D and uh, this is for B over D. Now to understand this approach, look at uh, the first thing that is the required significant depth of densification Di is obtained by using this formula. And here we are considering the n value equal to 0.5. So di, that is the significant depth of densification in meters, w sub h, the weight of hammer or the tamper, you can say, in metric ton, h, small h here, it is being used for the height of the drop in meters. Now the second step is from the figure that I have already shown, di is equal to B because depth of improvement that is equal to B. The hammer weight WH, height of drop small h, dimensions of the cross section and thus the area A and width D. So A is the contact area of the weight and D is the width of that weight that we are using in the dynamic compaction. So the fourth step is determine di over d and you know di is equal to b, so b over d is to be determined. Using the plot given by Poren and Rodriguez in 92, determine the magnitude of n multiplied by wh multiplied by h divided by ab for the value of b over d obtained. Next step is since the magnitude of wh, h, a and b are known or assumed, the number of hammer drops can be estimated. With known value of this, determine a over d and thus A. The grid spacing S sub G for dynamic compaction may now be assumed to be equal to or somewhat less than A. So that is the approach that we are going to follow over here. And uh, you can see that here one example is given. So the things would be clear when you will be solving this example yourself. 
let's say the weight of the hammer that is 185 kilo newton so obviously this is 18.5 tons height of drop is 26 meter width of the hammer that is d that is 5 meter so first thing is di determination so by using this formula just plug in the values you are getting 10.96 meter then look at this di that is equal to b and uh, that is equal to 10.96 that you have just determined the step number one so d you know here is 5 meters and the contact area of the weight is 25 square meter so that these are the things which are given third step is determine di over d or b over d and that is coming 2.2 now from the plot given in the figure we can get n, w, n times wh multiplied by h over ab equal to 220 kiloton per square meter so from the figure we have got this one since we know wh small h a and b number of hammer drops n is equal to 13 blows so we have determined the n equal to 13 blows next step with the known value of this determine a over d from the figure 3 and thus you can see that a is coming equal to 6 meters so you can say that the grid spacing s sub g that is nearly equal to a that is 6 meters thus using a square plate of 5 meter for a height of drop of 26 meter 30 number of blows at grid spacing of 6 meter using a weight of 18.5 ton tamping will enable 10.96 meter depth of improvement in situ evaluation of deep compaction the effectiveness of deep compaction is noted from analysis of construction process pore pressure and settlement records requirement of imported fill to achieve a certain grade energy consumed by the equipment etc so first look at the deep penetration test so standard penetration resistance SPT correlations with SPT and friction angle and relative density are available uh, for example SPT 30 indicate dense relative density cone penetration resistance CPT correlations with cone resistance and ore burden pressure and relative density are available compressibility estimates from penetration test so soil modulus and SPT results for example you can use this relationship stress strain parameters from cone penetration resistance so constraint modulus E is equal to this which is the cone penetration resistance then we are having the stress strain modulus from pressure meter test so Menard pressure meter and self boring pressure meter can be used then the dilometer uh, dilatometer test can be done and then come the shear wave velocity measurements so degree of ground improvement achieved by dynamic compaction so you can see that uh, initially you are having this pattern of the SPT but after dynamic compaction you can see that n values have been improved same thing can be seen in the cone penetration resistance and the pressure meter test results so the bold lines are representing uh, the value that you are getting after dynamic compaction so shear wave velocity test so this is the setup for the shear wave velocity test 
which can be used to evaluate or to assess the quality of the compaction and this is the flat dilatometer which can be used to check the effectiveness of the dynamic compaction. So you can see that shear wave velocity uh, when you have densified the mass obviously the shear wave velocity will be improved in that material so you can see that after deep compaction you are having the improvement in the shear wave increase in the shear wave velocity okay now you would find some case studies in this pile and uh, you can see here nice airport new runway france where the dynamic compaction was done so you can go through these slides yourself Here you can see the craters, formation of craters. Then there is one case study from the Saudi Arabia. And you can see the detail of that project is provided. Here you can see the weight is being lifted and here you can see the formation of craters and this study case study is from UAE and uh, you can see along the sea you know dynamic compaction is being done in this case and uh, here this is the study from India and uh, you would find some details about that uh, site and uh, ultimately you can see that uh, with the dynamic compaction there is a remarkable improvement in the SPT and value So the conclusions, ground improvement using dynamic compaction is very cost effective and competitive with the alternate foundation systems such as piling, excavation and backfilling and other similar techniques. Useful when large foundation areas need treatment and cost effective depending on the size of the project, type of soil conditions depth of treatment required, cost of suitable fill materials, etc. So that's all about the dynamic compaction. Thank you.